Rotational kinetic energy. Uh, just a second. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Um, hey, I'm going to have to do everything in fast motion if I'm going to get through it. Ro rotational kinetic energy. I, I need a volunteer up here. Come on up, uh, uh, John Carlo. I've got like 13 minutes to teach this. Okay, stand over there. Shh. I am going to throw John Carlo this meter stick. I'm going to take a couple steps back so more people can see you. Okay, are you watching it? Are you able to see it? I can't. He's wait, too wait. far away. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? He's going to catch the meter stick. Here it comes. Uh. Okay, great. Please throw it back to me. Uh. Do you notice what's true about the motion of the meter stick when we throw it to each other? It's staged. What's that? It's staged. Yeah, it stays straight. That means it's got translational kinetic energy. It's got kinetic energy that things moving in a line have. What can I do to this meter stick to make it a lot harder for him to catch? Yeah, it. yeah spin it, right? Here, catch this one. <laughs> okay. Here, wow, good catch. Here, try it with me. Wow, look at us. But, but the thing is, this thing has way more kinetic energy when we spin it, because not only does it have translational kinetic energy, but it's got that rotational kinetic energy, which makes it a lot harder to catch. Like, if anyone plays baseball or softball, if you throw your teammate a bat, do you want that bat to spin? Heck no, because you're giving it a lot more kinetic energy, and that's going to hurt them. Yay, thank you. Good job, good catch. I, I actually threw it to you really fast, and he caught it, man. Okay, so that's what today is all about, rotational kinetic energy. Okay, let's go ahead and get the formula. You know, for in linear land, our kinetic energy, which we're going to call translational kinetic energy, that's kinetic energy that goes, you know, where you're just going in a line. And we abbreviated Ke sub t. It's one half mv squared. That's our kinetic energy in linear land. Well, how about rotation land? Okay, this rotational kinetic energy, which we abbreviate Ke sub r. This is one half mv squared. What do you suppose that's going to be? Well, instead of mass, it's going to be rotational mass. And what do we call that? I. I. So it's going to be 1 half I. And instead of velocity squared, what do you suppose that's going to be? Yeah, omega squared, right? Angular velocity squared. And there it is. That's your rotational kinetic energy. OK? So let's do one problem. Look at this wheel. This is called Maxwell's yo-yo named after our own student, Maxwell. No, I think it's named after some other Maxwell, but, but it could have been named after him. So here's Maxwell's yo-yo. I'm going to let it go, and it's going to roll down, it's going to spin, and it's going to come back up like this. You see that? Watch this. And then it just comes right back up, although it kind of goes into some spinning mode, too. Here's, here's the point I want to make. When it's at the top, What's the only type of energy that this yo-yo has right now? Potential. Yeah, potential energy. When it gets to the bottom, what's the only type of energy that it has? Potential. Yeah, kinetic, but what kind of kinetic energy? Yeah, rotational. Does it have translational kinetic energy when it reaches the bottom of its travel? No, it's momentarily at rest, right? It was going down, then it's coming up, which means it's momentarily at rest. Okay? So, when we have this situation, we can actually talk about conservation of mechanical energy, but we have a third term in our mechanical energy, and that third term is rotational kinetic energy. By the way, one thing I want you to notice about this guy, when it comes down, it's rotating clockwise. When it comes down, it's rotating clockwise. Does it keep rotating clockwise, or does it change direction? Change direction. Like when it hits the bottom, I mean. Yeah, do you see it's going the same direction? Okay, and that's a conservation of momentum, a conservation of angular momentum thing. It can't hit the bottom and suddenly completely reverse its angular momentum. So, yeah. 
Okay, but let's go ahead and do conservation of mechanical energy. Thank you. We got conservation of mechanical energy. And I'm gonna have to do the fast version for the people at home because we've only got 10 minutes left. I wanna remind you, we get to have conservation of mechanical energy when the work done by non-conservative forces is equal to zero. That is, I can't have tension, normal force, or friction doing work. But now, if I've got something spinning, I gotta make sure something's not adding rotational energy either. So I can't be having friction slowing something down as it spins, or I can't have normal force like my hand speeding something up as it spins. So either way, I can't have work being done by non-conservative forces, you know. But another way to think of it is just, you know, no, no no non-conservative force is adding, adding or subtracting from the energy of the system. And when that's happening, when nothing's adding or subtracting to the energy of the system of a non-conservative nature, then I get to have conservation of mechanical energy, which means initial mechanical energy equals final mechanical energy. But now, my initial mechanical energy can be potential energy, translational kinetic energy, or rotational kinetic energy. I now have three types of energy to deal with. And my final mechanical energy is the same. So I'm gonna show you just a very simple problem. I was gonna do one with Maxwell's yo-yo, but I, I don't have time for that. So I'm gonna do just a, a simple problem here. This is a problem like number four of the worksheet, the rotations worksheet. They give you numbers, but I'm not going to do numbers. I'm just going to do this. I've got my ramp. I've got a hoop. This is a hoop at the top of the ramp. H above the bottom. This hoop is going to roll down the ramp until it ends up right there. And the hoop is going to be rolling in that direction. Rolling in that direction. There's a normal force but the normal force is acting perpendicular to the direction of motion. There's friction, but actually the friction is acting uh, perpendicular to the direction of motion, because theoretically, if it's rolling without slipping, then this point, the instantaneous velocity of this point is actually straight up. That is, when a tire rolls, the, the, the moment the tire moves, it's actually lifting up from the ground. So at that moment, its velocity is that way. But, but let's just pretend, even if you don't get any of that, let's just pretend it's a conservation of mechanical energy situation with no friction doing negative work and, and no, uh, no normal force doing positive work. So here we go. Initial mechanical energy equals final mechanical energy. I want to remind you that's a hoop. It's a hoop with a radius r. So go ahead and make, give that hoop a radius r. What's the only type of energy that it has initially? Potential. Good, potential energy, right? MGH. What types of energy does it have at the end? Kinetic. Good, does it have translational kinetic energy? Yeah, because it's moving that way. Does it have rotational kinetic energy? Sure, because it's spinning, right? So it's going to have one half mv squared, and it's going to have one half i omega squared. It's going to have the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy. Here comes the next point. 
MGH equals one half MV squared plus one half. I actually know what the formula for the moment of inertia of a hoop is. Anyone know what that is? Yeah, MR squared. So the moment of inertia of a hoop is MR squared. The omega, I'm going to use this substitution. Remember, theta equals S over R, so omega equals V over R. I'm going to use that substitution for omega. So I've got V over R squared. And so now I'm going to multiply out. 1 half mv squared plus 1 half m, the r squared's cancel, and I get v squared. I want to remind you, this is the translational energy. This is the rotational kinetic energy. Now, on tonight's homework, you're going to be plugging in numbers and answering questions. But the point I want to make is this. What fraction of the total energy that this hoop started with, what fraction of that energy gets converted to <coughs> translational kinetic energy? <coughs> Good, half of it. What fraction is getting converted to rotational kinetic energy? Yeah. Half. So, so if I started with 20 joules of gravitational potential energy, by the time it gets to the bottom, I'm going to have 10 joules for translational kinetic energy and 10 joules for rotational kinetic energy. Is it, am I going to have that same ratio if I have a disk rolling down a ramp? Well, let's find out. Oops, I didn't need to erase that, but I do need to erase this. Let's go ahead and have that disk rolling down the, the, the ramp. Same scenario. This is H. This is now a disk. And when it reaches the bottom, my little disk will be moving, translating, and also rotating. I still get to do initial mechanical energy equals final mechanical energy. I still got MGH equals 1 half MV squared plus 1 half I omega squared. But now, since it's a disk, what is its I? Yeah, one half m r squared. And for <coughs> omega, I'm going to use v, v over r. So now this becomes one half m v squared plus here, one fourth m v squared. So now, what fraction of the total is translational and what fraction of the total is rotational? What? Huh? I'd say half is um, translational and one fourth is rotational. Good. So if, if the total is three quarters, then one half out of three quarters is translational. But I hope you see that one half out of three quarters, one half over th three fourths gets you two thirds. So two thirds is rotational. Oops. Two thirds is translational kinetic energy. And only one third is rotational kinetic energy, because right because it's it's one half out of a total of three fourths, which is the same as one half times four thirds, which is the same as two thirds. I just I just want to know what fraction of the total. Okay. So so like let's say I told you that this disk had an initial gravitational potential energy of thirty joules. How many joules of translational kinetic energy would it have? Twenty, and how many joules of trans of, of rotational? Ten. You see. So let me ask you this: Who wins the race? Who's going faster? Who's going to win a race between a disc and a hoop if they both roll down a ramp and start at the same height? Anyone want to tell me who wins the race, disc or the hoop? I showed it to you once, but yeah. do you remember who won? <laughs> What's that? Yeah, the disc wins. The disc wins the race. And the way the disc wins the race is because, why? Tell me, what, what is it about this now, you know, here? If this, if this started with 30 joules, then this would be split up 15 joules, 15 joules. 
this guy starts with 30 joules, it's getting split up 20 joules and 10 joules. Why does the disc win the race? Has a what? smaller um, inertia or the eye. Yeah, good, it's got a smaller eye. But I want you to tell me in terms of energy. More translational. Yeah, it's got more translational kinetic energy, which means it's going faster, which means it wins the race. Right, whoever's going faster, whoever's got the faster V wins the race. Well, this guy's going to be going faster because this translational kinetic energy is going to be bigger than this guy's final translational kinetic energy. Because he's wasting, this guy is wasting a bunch of its gravitational potential energy in rotating it, which doesn't make it go faster. Okay, well, hey, good luck with this stuff, and uh, we'll talk more about it tomorrow. Bye-bye.